Thank you, Louis. Yeah, actually, we mentioned a really uh, interesting point. I mean, when we look around here, we are all like a, with a bunch of, well, a big bunch of uh, young people. And I think this is very interesting to see that, uh, that there are so many young people uh, who actually care about the things that happened in the past and, and are here only to remember the Roma and Sinti genocide. And uh, yeah, what, what were your feelings about this? All right, then I'll we'll just go on. Uh, Benjamin is my name again from the European Youth Forum, and yes, uh, yes, I can say like after the past few days, I unfortunately really just joined yesterday, and this is not my first commemoration ceremony that I've joined. But um, after the recent developments in Europe, the right wing, right, the race of the right wing extremists, and all the negative news that we are receiving all over Europe, this is a very encouraging uh, thing to see that so many engaged young people are here trying to step up trying to do something against this rise, trying to deal with their past, with our past, with our shared past. That is really something that gives me, as a member of the biggest umbrella organizations of the young people of Europe, who tries to represent and tries to work uh, with all of young people to, to get the best for, for you as a young people out of it, is really something that's encouraging. And I hope that we can move forward from here and that we will find um, yeah, more empowering messages as, uh, as like yesterday when we had this lovely Reverend uh, Jesse J uh, Jackson here and he made this very emotional moment during the seminar. I was really deeply touched and so yeah, that is something that we need to mobilize. Our young people need to feel this energy, stand together. We are not just Roma, we are not just Jews, we're not just Muslims. We are all one society that struggles as young people for an equal and justice future. So that is what I'm taking out of here. Thank you, Benjamin. Yeah, Pina? Yeah. Um, of course, adding to all of this, first of all, uh, I participated uh, last year for the first time. I had wonderful facilitators as well, David and Tina, that uh, welcomed me and the whole community welcomed me very nicely. It was an extremely powerful uh, moment for me. What I took from this time is how quickly after 75 years we normalized things and it shouldn't be normalized. Driving through to, by bus to, to Birkenau, I, I, I couldn't notice how close the town is. Like every time I go I see how close we, people were and didn't want to notice or like close their out, uh, eyes and um, how quickly we can not see something and not react. And for me, uh, this experience here, you learning all the, all the mechanisms that are behind uh, the oppression and how it happens, not just automatically rejecting the right-wing movement, but understanding what are the powerful uh, moment for me. What I took from this time is how quickly after 75 years we normalized things and it shouldn't be normalized. Driving through to, by bus to, to Birkenau, I, I couldn't notice how close the town is. Like every time I go I see how close you people were and they were We keep alive the memory of the victims because the last two days we also heard a lot that the survivors 
Still a few years are with us, but then what's going to happen? And that's that's our um, our role at this moment to see how we save their their stories, how we pass on to to our to our next generation. And I remember when I first came around 2010, I didn't know about the Roma Holocaust. I had uh, knowledge a bit. Uh, we heard in, a, in school, but that was the first learning experience. And since the last years, whenever we are coming here with, with young people, they engaged and they motivated. And this gives them uh, motivation to continue. They're going home, they're going to their communities, they're showing the photos, they're explaining to their grandmas, to their brothers, to their families. And this is, this is what makes it meaningful. And it doesn't need big projects. It's just that you go home and you explain, look, Auschwitz happened, uh, this is here. Um, and also, we try always to see how we connect it with the present, because in the end of the day, what is happening nowadays in Europe, um, it's a bit makes us worried, uh, all who is working in this field. And, and we hope that through this connection with the past, we can make, make a bigger change. Uh, and to make it um, make it a better society in the future, because where we are at this moment, uh, this is not where I see myself being wanting to be. Like there are no countries where we feel saved, uh, and not just minorities, but any anyone who is a bit different. Uh, so there is a big hate uh, in Europe, and you just feel that somehow this society and this Europe just needs a bit more fire, and and it's getting a bit something boring, bombing. Um, and I hope with, with our engagement, and I think that's why it's also very important that, that this alliance building is happening and we are here and showing this solidarity what you do today, it's very important. And I'm very grateful you are here even in, on this day. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marietta. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, kind of going off of what Marietta said uh, about the fact that it's important for us to be here. I think for me it's really a privilege to be welcome inside because I think it's really important for communities to have their own space where they can gather and live their identities among each other. So the fact that we are welcomed here to experience that side by side you is really, really valuable for me. Um, and speaking of takeaways from the previous days, um, they were in a sense similar to my takeaways last year. Um, actually, I was, um, I was here for 2nd of August last year and it was the first time I visited Auschwitz. Um, and for me as a Jewish activist, it was incredibly important to experience both the positive energy, but perhaps especially the anger and the disappointment with ways in which Roma recognition is still lacking. I think that helps me to be a better ally and to channel back some of that anger when I leave this place. Um, so I felt really happy to be in the room when I heard yesterday during the different panels really that there is anger, that much more can be done and that we can be a part of actually seeing that through. Thank you. Um, yeah, for me it's um, still, I think, quite uh, hard to, to collect all the, the emotions and the impressions. But um, one first observation that maybe I would like to share is that I'm really, really proud how many young girls and women are here also at this event. Also at this panel, I think this is something uh, incredible. Um, maybe to our generation something that it's um, yeah um, it's it's clear and it's um, uh, yeah but but to many generations before us that was not that uh, obvious um, and um, on the event itself uh, I was here five years ago at the 70th anniversary that was my first time at the commemoration and um, I was deeply impressed uh, by by all the emotions and by all the activists here. At uh, that time we were even, I think, 1,000 of us, which was crazy. Um, but um, I am coming from a minority myself, and um, I am Corinthian Slovenian, and I experienced um, racism and discrimination myself uh, 
when I was younger and um, to share these uh, experiences and these stories with all the youngsters who are here I think it's what makes us human and what makes us youngsters and what makes us movements and um, what, what makes us humans in the sense that we share these stories from different narratives but this is something that connects us all and I still remember life uh, from 2014 when I met this young Roma activist Vicente who explained me about this superhero and about the comics and um, I was so impressed and so taken by this moment that um, for me everyone, all of you who are here are, are superheroes you, you are all like sparks that um, grow throughout the world and Europe and they share these stories further on and this is for me most valuable in such moments and in such events Thank you, Matic. Thank you for the first time. Um, you all mentioned really important things. We, we mentioned the racism and anti-Gypsyism and racism that, uh, and, and anti-Semitism that uh, people are facing nowadays. And this is for sure, uh, this is also one reason why we are here today. Um, but um, yeah, I also remember my first time here was also five years ago in the 70th anniversary when we were like, um, yeah, thousand people. So you have to imagine that we are already a lot of uh, uh, people here. But imagine like even more, like double the, of this big group, what, what it means. So I have the feeling it shows already. It's also a kind of a visibility, this amount of people who, who gather together and stay for a few days together and work on the topics of of human rights and, and the Holocaust uh, history. So the educational part is also a, a big part of this group. Um, so what experience um, do different youth structures uh, make regarding the Holocaust education? Maybe you, you can share, but since you are like all representing uh, um, international uh, youth organizations, uh, I would like to know also from you what, what role can like play the youth, youth initiatives and youth organizations in remembrance so, and what impact can we really have apart from this meeting here now every year with so many people which, which creates the visibility um, and also I would like to know um, because what my experience was in the past five years that we at the beginning we had mostly Roma, organiz Roma youth organizations from all over Europe but meanwhile we have the European Union of Jewish Students, we have Armenian people here, we have old people here and, and, uh, and all different kinds of groups who are supporting and being um, solidary with us. And I think, um, so where and how can we strengthen our coalitions? And what, what are finally uh, our common goals for the future? Who would like to answer this? <laughs> Okay, I will start now with my other hat, which is the Advisory Council on Youth of the Council of Europe, which is also one of the partners of this event, or um, the youth department of the Council of Europe itself supports the event with financial means and resources. Um, what I think, as you mentioned, Irina, already, I think coming also from a minority, I think we need to get out of this scope and really reach out to the mainstream or to the majority, however you want to call it. And I think that this Dikina Bistar is also going in this direction as an event and I think this is really good because if we explain the stories and share our experiences among ourselves, I mean we are all convinced uh, we can just improve but we cannot really come out and, and reach even more people if we are only among ourselves. Um, so I think that this is really an important direction to go. Uh, to grow in the sense of uh, partners, in the sense of um, different um, youth networks and so that we reach and to really invite them to come here and to experience that and uh, share it then with their own communities and organizations. Um, when it comes to the Council of Europe, which is an organization that has uh, 47 member states and sits in Strasbourg, um, we do a lot of youth work, a lot of, we support a lot of youth activities, and, but maybe the main message is that we do it in a co-managed way, which means that 
youngsters play a role in the decision-making processes, which means when it comes to the um, to the programs, uh, to the financing of the programs and different activities, young people are involved, such as me, myself, for example, I sit also in this body and I can co-decide uh, which events, which programs should take place. And I think this is also very important for Roma youth movements to really convince ourselves that we can do it on our own, we can ourselves organize